I was talking with a friend of mine this week, and uh, he was going, he was reminiscing about the revival up in Cornelia, 2000, I want to say 2003, 2004, somewhere right in there. They had a unusual stirring of the Holy Ghost. Unusual. And um, it was up at the Camp Creek Baptist Church. The pastor said that he felt that God had spoke to his heart about asking Rufus Edmondson <laughs> to come preach a revival. If you know anything about Rufus Edmondson, he don't fit in. I don't think he would fit in at Camp Creek, but he fit in. They had him up there and he preached. And we're, we're talking and he said, my buddy told me, he said, I grew up in church my whole life. He said, I went to Sunday school, patched the pirate club. He said, mom and dad, deacon, Sunday school teacher. He said, but there was something about that revival where God just shook me. And he said, I was sitting there in that church and he said, I think it was Monday night. He said, the Spirit of God settled in that place. And he said, the song director that was leading the choir, the song leader, quit leading the choir and jumped down in the altar, started weeping and crying. They thought, man, something must be going on at home or he must be struggling with something at work. And he said, that man got up and he said, he looked totally different. He said, I need to testify. He said, I just got saved. Been leading the choir for 20 years. He said, the Holy Ghost revealed to me while I was leading the choir, I was lost. Yeah. And this is what my buddy said. He said, Brother Adam, he said, it sent a shockwave through that church. Because they thought, well, how in the world could he get saved? He said, but that shockwave hit me. And he said, I couldn't shake it. He said, about Tuesday night, he said, I had all I could take. He said, I got in and I got saved. I think it went for two weeks, two and a half weeks. And he said, it wasn't, it wasn't the preacher that did it. It wasn't Brother Rufus Edmondson. It wasn't the pastor at Camp Creek. He said it was just God deciding to come and settle in that church. Well, what he didn't know was about two years later, I was just right down the road from Camp Creek. And you ask my wife, we were in Fort Oglethorpe, Georgia. I had preached Sunday morning. We had a couple of people get saved. And then we came back Sunday night, somebody got saved. And then we left out for a camp meeting I was supposed to be in. And they called me and said, people are at the church wanting in, but it's locked. I said, for what? He said, they're wanting to get saved. The people just want to pray. I told that pastor, I said, I got to go back home. And we just started praying. Kind of like we've been doing on Wednesday nights. We just started praying. By that next Sunday, by the time it rolled around, God had done started stirring again. And I'm talking people that were teaching Sunday school, been in that church for years, started questioning their own salvation. And a lot of the people that were, I guess, more pharisaical, they said, well, that's the preachers that Brother Adams calls them everybody to doubt. If I can cause you to doubt, you ain't even saved, okay? That's right. Okay? It ain't Brother Adam. And I called, my, I called my friend, Brother Jimbo Seaton, and I said, you just pack you some clothes and come down on Monday night, and we're just going to go one night, and if God, if nothing happens, we'll go home, eat ice cream. 
And he came down to Cornelia and he preached Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Two and a half weeks. 65 people walked down the aisle and got saved. But here was the, here was the shockwave. They had a local bluegrass southern gospel group singing. They were members of the church. And their lead singer was their, I guess, she was the, the spiritual voice of the group, testify, sing, shout. And she got in that revival. And I'll never forget, she came to me and she said, I don't know if I'm going to heaven or hell. I said, you? You? Her dad pastored up in North Carolina. He slipped down one night. And he said, Brother Humphreys, he said, I pulled on the parking lot. Clifford Parker said, I pulled on the parking lot. And he said, there was something different when I got on the parking lot. He said, God was here. So I called, I was calling Brother Jimbo and I was talking to him about it. I said, did you know about two and a half years before that week revival we had, about a year before that revival that you stayed there? I said, they had one right up the road. I, God, God visited Cornelia twice that we know of. And I said, you remember that night Misty got in? <laughs> he said, oh, do I ever. He said, I thought, I said, why is she in the altar? This is the guy preaching the revival. And I said, you remember she got saved and it sent a shockwave through that church. And they came to me and they said, it's known in the community now. This is what one of the, one of the demons, I mean the deacon said. He said, it's known in the community now that we're a church that believes you can get saved twice. I said, I'm going to let Misty testify then. Jack. Yeah. I said, Misty, you tell them what happened. Let's clear it up. She said, I repeated a prayer. I went through all the motions, got baptized. My daddy baptized me. She said, but sitting in this revival, the Holy Ghost told me I was lost. Amen. And I disagreed with him for almost a week. And she said, I finally had to tell God that I was lost, that I agreed with him. Okay, well, I'm lost. And she said, that was when God done a work in my heart. She said, I'd never been saved before. I, and I'm going, I told you. I told you. I told you. Ain't nobody getting saved twice. There were people that had professions of faith, but they didn't have the possession of faith. That, 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 they, had, that, they had a head religion, but God never done nothing in their heart. Man. But I'm telling you, people were getting in left and right. Yeah, I mean, we, we, didn't, we, we never stopped to have a break. We, we, went, we, we went through that meeting. God done a wonderful, mighty work in the community. And I told that preacher, I said, you know what's crazy to me, Jim? I said, you, you, how did I say it? I said, you, you, can't, you can't make that happen. You can't put that on. He, I said, it just, either God does it or he doesn't. Matter of fact, you can spend a month, if we just all took a month off work, we came down here every night, 7 o'clock. We prayed for 30 days every night, 7 o'clock. Ask God for revival. At the end of the 30 days, we may be in revival or we may not be. At the end of the day, it's just God deciding to pass by. And this is what he said. He said, you need to just go home and read John 5. Let me, can I just read it to you? And I'm going to let Amanda sing. Listen to this. 
there was a feast of the Jews and the Jew and Jesus went up to Jerusalem and there was at Jerusalem by the sheep a market pool which in the Hebrew tongue is called Bethesda having five porches in these lay a great multitude of impotent folk and th th here's a picture of the lost man blind halt withered look at verse 3 waiting for the moving of the water for an angel went down at a certain season into that pool and he troubled the water whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had and a certain man was there which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years and he was ticked off that somebody always got to the water before he did an angel would come down stir the waters they would jump in and they were instantly healed now let me give you the practical application there's no angel of the Lord stirring waters today it's the Holy Ghost that comes down and stirs the people's hearts and moves and works. And this is what I've been praying. This is what we've been asking God for, is just to stir the waters. Yes. Just stir the waters. Because if the waters get stirred, impotent folk, lame, halt, withered, they're going to run to that water. And they're going to jump in. I'm going to be honest with you. There was one night we showed up to church. And every night was a gospel message night. So the gospel was presented every night. But there was, one, there was one night we got there. And I think somebody was singing a special. And the preacher got up from the front row with his Bible in his hand. And this is all he said. He said, come on. <laughs> Come on. That's all. That's what was preached that night. And people were diving in, jumping in, getting saved. There was that much conviction. There was that much drawing in that church. That, that, there was a boy coming one night. I'm talking strung out on drugs. Wasted. Facing prison time. And somebody said, you need to at least go to that revival that just one night. His mom was a piano player. She said, you need to go to that revival just one night. He preached for me just a few weeks ago, Brother Chad Usher. Hey, man. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> he walked in that night strung out. And he said there was so much conviction that all I knew I had to get to that altar, I'd burst hell wide open if I didn't. You know what that is? That's the troubling of the waters, the stirring of the waters. Not every service is a troubling or a stirring. But he's here right now. I'm telling you, when I, I know the Holy Ghost when I feel the Holy Ghost. I'm not saved on my feelings, but I'm glad I feel something, amen. <laughs> Jesus walks over to this man and he said, Sir, he said, How? He said, Wilt thou be made whole? Notice he didn't go to Jesus. Jesus went to him. And, 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 no, and notice that it wasn't at the time of the, of the stirring of the waters either. That, 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 that's another thing. And the impotent man answered him and said, Sir, I have no man when the water's troubled to put me in the pool. But while I'm coming, another one will step down before me. And G Jesus just looked at this old boy. And he said, Sir, rise up, take up your bed, and walk out of here. You don't need the water. You don't need the angel. Yeah. I'm everything. I'm the alpha. I'm the omega. I'm the beginning. I'm the end. I'm the first. I'm the last. I'm the everything in between. And if you will by faith pick up your bed, all you've got to do is pick up your bed and walk. And guess what? The Bible said, and he therefore was immediately made whole. Yeah. 
immediately Amen. took up his bed and walked and on the same day was on the Sabbath and boy I'm telling you something it ticked some people off because he was made whole that day how dare Jesus tell him to pick up his bed on the Sabbath and carry it that's what we need in America is the troubling of the waters I had, a, I had a man come by the store the other day. I love talking with Brother Jimmy. My kids love him. He's, he's a good old man. He's been in church his whole life. His whole life. I mean, this man's saved, son, teaching Sunday school. And he just comes by and hangs out with me. He come by and we, we were talking. He said, and every time he sees me, I don't think he knows my name. He says, hey, preacher man. Hey, preacher man. He aggravates the hound out of me. He says, hey, preacher man. He said, brother, he said, I think I'm at the point now in this country where I don't even want to pray in wrath, remember mercy. He said, I am so sick and tired of what's going on in this country and in this land. I just want God to judge it. And if I get caught up in it, so be it. I know where I'm going when I die. And I leaned up and I looked at him and I said, that's exactly what will bring revival. Is when the Christian and when the church doesn't care about if they're going to be hurt or they're going to be taken out of their daily schedule. And they say, you know what? Let judgment fall. Let the wrath of God fall. This country needs a cleansing. This country needs a cleansing. From the tavern, the whorehouse, all the way to the White House. It needs a cleansing. It needs a cleansing. And there and ain't nothing you can do about it. I can't do nothing about it. But if God stirs the waters, the, 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 the people will respond to that Holy Ghost. He'll, they'll respond to the Spirit of God doing His work. And that actually is what I was going to talk about today. We're going to be in John 16, but I, I think the Lord's taking a different path. But in John 16, the Comforter. Yeah. Which means a paraclete. One that's called alongside to help. Jesus, Jesus said it's, it, it, it's very expedient. He said, it's good for you if I go. Because if I don't go, he can't come. And when he comes, he's going to reprove the world. He's going to convict the world of three things. Sin, righteousness, and judgment. You know what I was going to preach on this morning? On three things that I can't teach. three things I can't teach I can't teach sin I can't teach righteousness and I can't teach judgment but the Holy Ghost can and that's his job is to teach it there's just some things you ain't going to learn in a college with a professor in a school something the Sunday school teacher can't teach you the pastor the preacher can't teach you only the Holy Ghost can open your blinded eyes and reveal to you your lost condition that's the only way sure. brother Ken I was there the night at Faith Baptist camp when the piano quit playing and Donna Kearns fell off the piano stool and fell in that altar and started crying out to God that he'd save her. <laughs> That's, that was, that was, they, they were walking out of the, they would, they would step out the aisle, brother, Ken, you know how you talked about you came to the altar? There was so much conviction, they would step out of the pew and fall in the aisle. I watched it, getting saved. They couldn't make it to the altar, they thought they'd die and go to hell before they got to the altar. They would stand up and then in the aisle they'd fall out and call on God. See, God, let me, let me give you a verse of scripture. And this is where I've got to be careful too. God resisteth the proud. But my goodness, he gives that grace to the humble. 
all you got to do is humble yourself and say, you know what? I am lost. I never have been saved. Well, I was baptized. I did the prayer. I read the card. I joined the church. But when he draws, no man can come to the Father except the Spirit draw him. By the way, I'm not going to preach anything or teach anything that's not in this, in this Bible right here, okay? So, hey, you know, a lot of people say, well, that ain't how we are taught, how we was raised up. Tradition will send you to hell quicker than anything else. I said tradition will send you to hell quicker. That's why the Jews can't even get saved. They're eat up in that tradition mess. They still think they got to have a high priest. They still have to go and offer up sacrifice. They're still doing that. That, 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 old, that old lifestyle. They don't realize that Christ came and reversed all that. That's what we're talking about in Sunday school this morning. The fellow of the temple was rent. Christ is all you need. And you know what it says? It's so simple. There's no barbed wire around salvation. It says in Romans 10, 13, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, or Romans 10, 9, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. It didn't say and with the heart confession is made, did it? How many's got you? Do I have a Bible reader here this morning? Anybody got a, anybody got a Bible? Romans 10? You know, people come down, well, I got saved. I just, I said the prayer in my heart. No, he said with the mouth confession's made. I'm going to give you another verse. He says, if you'll confess me before men, I'll confess you before my Father which is in heaven. If you deny me before men, I'll deny you before my Father which is in heaven. There, there, there's something about standing up and saying, hey, I want to tell you about the day I got saved. There's something about getting saved and born again and wanting to tell somebody immediately. You're being confirmed is what's happening. God said, okay, he's testifying. That's one of mine. Yep. As soon as Paul got saved, he couldn't keep his mouth shut. Agrippa had to hear it. Uh, the, the list goes on and on and on. Paul told everybody on his dying days that I fought a good fight. They said, what is he talking about? I finished my course. What's he talking about? He's fixing to get his head cut off. Henceforth laid up for me a crown of righteousness that the righteous judge... Sorry, pull the string. He's preaching again. He cut his head off. He couldn't shut up. John the Baptist didn't get his head cut off for picking a banjo. <laughs> he, he, he's running that mouth, preaching. Preaching repentance. Get your heart right with God. That's terrible what happened in Texas yesterday. Terrible. Terrible. That mass murder, that guy gets out of the car, just starts mowing people down. They thought they were going to the mall to go shopping on a Saturday evening. And there's a whole family laying on the sidewalk covered in their blood where he gets out and mows them down. No respect for life. They, they got up that morning and they tied their shoes and they brushed their teeth and they combed their hair thinking that they were going to lay down in bed that night. And if they didn't know the God of this Bible, if they never accepted Christ, they bursted hell wide open. We're, we're not promised tomorrow. The only thing separating you from eternity, you ought to check it out sometime. Just reach inside your shirt. There's a little bitty muscle somewhere right around in here called the heart. And if that muscle ever quits beating, you're gone. What, you're literally one tick away from eternity. And I want to tell you something about eternity. Eternity is too long to be wrong.